All right, let's say that you wanna test out a little piece of JavaScript as quickly as possible. Well, what do you do? You could open up the browser and you could go to the console and you could type it there. You could open VS Code and you could create a file, save it, run it with Node, or you could use the Quokka.js extension to be able to test your JavaScript in seconds. All right, so as I said, the question is, how do you run your JavaScript as quickly as possible? And there's a few different ways you could do this, but one of the things I want you to keep in mind that I'll show you in a second is if you're already kind of in a big project, you might want to test out a piece of JavaScript in isolation. So even if you already have VS Code open, you don't necessarily wanna dump that code into your project just to test something out. You might wanna have kind of a safe space to do that. So I'll show you a couple of different things uh, that run through my head. Then I'll show you Quokka.js, the pretty cool extension to be able to do this. We'll test it out, show you a few, fe few features, and then I'll tell you a little additional feature at the end of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so I've got open uh, my dev desks project. Uh, this is something I've been working on a lot recently and actually for several months. And it's a, a place where people can uh, upload images of their desk setup. So it's at devdesks.io. You can log in with Twitter and upload images. You can see some of them load in here. Anyways, um, what I bring this up to show you, like if I'm already in kind of a big project and I just want to test out a piece of code, I don't necessarily want to do it in this big overwhelming project. So if I wanted to explore with the date function, for example, I could come into the browser, I could go into the console and I could say, all right, what is a new date? Give me, okay, it looks like that. And then what if I just wanted a certain part of that and I could type in here, but it's not great. It's not my editor. There's not a lot of space. It's not really that good. Alternatively, and I have a video on this, if you wanna run Node.js code in VS Code, you could create a, let's just create a new test file in here, test.js. We can come over to the terminal and we can say, uh, hello world. All right, and then we can run this file. So we could do node and then test.js if we save the file and then run it again. Now we should see that log out. But that takes a few extra steps. Either you're switching over to the browser, then you're in kind of this cramped space, or you're creating a file in VS Code. You are uh, having to save the file and then run it with the node command. And it's just, it's not a super big inconvenience, but it's something extra that you have to do that you shouldn't have to do. By the way, if you wanna know how to run that node code, I've got a video on that that you can check out. But most importantly, what I'm here to talk about is this Quokka extension, which I use for uh, Scratchpad or Playground for JavaScript. And it's an extension inside of VS Code that basically allows you to open up a new file, run JavaScript, and it will run it real time. So when I say run JavaScript, I mean type JavaScript, and it will run the rest real time. So let's look at uh, inside of here, if we want to install this extension, we go to extensions and search for Quokka, Q-U-O-K-K-S. And let's go ahead and install that thing. And then we should be ready to go. So with this now installed, we can run, uh, open the command palette, command shift P on Mac or control shift P on Windows, type in Quokka and do new JavaScript file. Now inside of here, I can directly, notice I still get IntelliSense, I still all, get all the benefits of being inside of VS Code, but I can run JavaScript right inside of here. And not only does it print out the information at the bottom, it also sends me a little message to the side. What? It shows me everything I need to know right here without having to do much. So one of the things that I was thinking about testing out um, to make sure it worked is this get minified record thing. And basically what it does is it takes in an object and it strips out a few pieces of data. This is specifically for me working with Airtable. So anyway, just an example of how I would test this out. I've got a little snippet in here for a record. So if I have a record that has an ID property and a fields object with a couple of properties, by the way, I just turned 30, what? Uh, and it has a couple of additional fields that I don't necessarily care about or properties that created at and updated at. So if I wanted to create a minif a get minified record, it could take in a record and then it could return uh, just the things that I want to. So just kind of uh, make sure my syntax is here for my arrow function. And what this thing will do is it will look at that object and it will return a new object where the ID matches the record ID. And then it's gonna take, it's basically gonna ignore the created at properties, the updated at properties, take the fields and then flatten them. So what that means is take all of those field properties and then put them directly on this new object. So if I was writing this and I wanted to test it out, maybe I start off like this and then I say, all right, let's log out 
uh, get minified record. Again, IntelliSense is here. Pass in this record and uh, log this out. Let's see, field. Oh, this is record.fields. Again, a great way to test this out. Uh, so record.fields, and this will uh, be a fields property. Okay, so that looks close, but I want to flatten out those fields, which means I want name and age to be direct properties on this object. So maybe I just do a spread operator, and now I get this flattened object. And I, can, I don't have to I run the file myself. It's already running by Quokka. I can see the output here. It's really, really great. Now, another example of when I've used this before is I was going through an algorithms and data structures class, and there was lots of little uh, challenges in JavaScript where you write some code to try to solve some sort of algorithm. And I did them all in the scratch pad. So again, I didn't have to run a file. I could just see the output right there and I could see whether or not it was working. It worked out really well. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about is let's say we had a date, uh, consti new date, and you can, uh, if we log this D object, you can see it prints off this big string. So this is Monday, February 22nd. And what if I just wanted to get rid of all of this stuff? Well, let's try to figure out how. We could do a substring and maybe it's 10 characters. Uh, let's see, substring of D. Oh, we need to call to string first. So we'll convert it to a string, then call substring. Um, and 10 actually is gonna start from the uh, index 10 and go on. So maybe I want zero to 10, uh, Monday, February 22nd. Maybe I want a little bit more, maybe 20. Uh, a little bit less, so maybe 15, I think, will end up being right. So Monday, February 21st, or 22nd on 2021. I can test that stuff right out here. So there's, uh, anytime I've got a little piece of JavaScript that I just want to test out, I don't scroll over to the browser and go into the console. I don't create a new file and save it and run it and blah, blah, blah. I just use Quokka extension in here, which is pretty sweet. I mean, it works out so well. So the last thing I want to show you uh, is that not only can you do this with, uh, JavaScript, let me close this file. Don't need to save it. Uh, let me look up Quokka and do a new TypeScript file. All right, so inside of a new TypeScript file, I can say, all right, let first name uh, be a string, and then it can be James, for example. And then uh, what if I said first name equals one? Well, this thing should now yell at me again because uh, number is not assignable to type string. So not only can you use this for JavaScript, lots of people are using TypeScript now, so you can use this for TypeScript as well. Uh, which is really, really neat. So this stuff works really well. Uh, I did want to show uh, all the features that I just showed are completely free with the community edition. So you can install it. You're ready to go. There is, uh, There are some pro editions here with some extra, um, extra bits of things you can do. One example is a quick package install. So you can actually install packages into that thing um, and be able to test out some of that stuff. But I don't necessarily need that for my workflow. It works good for me just testing out a little piece of JavaScript with the free community edition. All right, so if you're looking for a way to quickly test out a little piece of JavaScript, uh, Quokka extension inside of VS Code is by far my favorite way to do it. It's the fastest. Uh, hopefully that's helpful for you. Let me know if, uh, if you used Quokka before or if you have any alternative ways of testing out JavaScript that I didn't mention. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you in the next one.